Hello Wadlanders! In Dylan's two most recent streams, he gave us some information on the team's focus, planning, and progress on several different things we can expect to come in the future. Some such as religion guaranteed to come in 1.2, and others having an undetermined release timeline. As a starting point, Dylan talked at length about what their focus is for controller functions, and it's better than we originally thought. Dylan went into detail about just how annoying the functionality of the favorites menu currently is. This is even worse for mage runs, as the more spells you have, the more often you will be forced to navigate through these favorite menus. This is especially true when you're trying to hotkey to have two separate spells in your hands at once. Needless to say, this is quite immersion breaking and can be very time consuming. This also can be frustrating when you're trying to organize your spells, because as you improve your skills, this task grows in difficulty, which kind of reverts the reward of improving. Transitioning to the team's focus for controller functions, the goal is to create a less intrusive system using hotkeys for controllers that allows for much quicker changing between spells, items, abilities, etc. While controllers don't have as many keys as a keyboard, obviously, this can be remedied through a button such as RB used as a universal button to combo with other buttons, essentially creating additional hotkeys with these different combos. Something else to help with an ever-growing favorites menu is a customizable radial menu where you can quickly move between different favorited spells. Currently, the modder Parapets is looking into how possible this type of mod would be, and may potentially be working on getting it set up. Parapets is a talented modder who has worked on a number of different Skyrim mods for the overall community. The basis for this would be using Steam input bindings to ensure usable reaction time from the hotkeys. There is no promise that this will come out, however, if it does, it would help fix the gap for the Wildlander team while also allowing them to reduce focus on building it themselves. This next benefit is actually for keyboard users. I don't have particularly large hands, so when I'm gaming and need to use certain abilities such as refill water skin or place campfire, I sort of just stop, look for the button, and press it before returning to the game. This isn't the end of the world, however, it doesn't help players, myself included, stay immersed in the game when you're forced to stop and have to find a button each time you need to use some of these abilities. Something Dylan is looking to have, which hopefully Parapets would be able to construct, would be for certain keys to serve as multiple hotkey options, allowing players to avoid reaching all the way across their keyboard to use different skills. This would be a huge quality of life that also helps direct players to keep themselves immersed in the gameplay. Additionally, the idea would be to allow players to easily map and remap these keys to what fits their preference, which is great news. I recently started playing much more keyboard and mouse, and I never realized how much it would benefit from an overhaul like this. Because this project isn't being worked on outside of the Wildlander team, we are going to leave it at that as I don't know too much more about how far along this project is, or even if it has a good chance of being made in the first place. The next big topic which I personally am excited to discuss is that Dylan talked about wanting to make more playthrough content of Wildlander. While it isn't guaranteed due to his busy schedule, I do hope he is able to make this content as this is something that I have been wanting for a while. The idea Dylan has is to have a permadeath based playthrough and is currently debating whether or not he wants it in video form or just streaming. Assuming that the content is just stream based, he is aiming to have it be more interactive. While nothing is currently set in stone, he would be open to betting channel points on how long a character will survive, slash if they will survive a certain encounter. Another idea he has been thinking about is having the community vote on what actions the character will take, and the vote will affect the chance of that idea being chosen from a wheel. Another way to think of this is 25% of the stream votes for X, 25% of the stream votes for Y, and the remaining 50% vote for Z. A wheel will have a 50% chance of going with option Z, and 25% chance of going with options X and Y, respectively. 
The next area to talk through is information about religion. Part of the reason we haven't seen anything tangible in terms of progress when it comes to the team's work on the upcoming religion system is due to Dylan taking point on it with a focus of getting comfortable with the religion mod, as well as a good chunk of its features. He took the time to investigate whether it has different systems and aspects that the team are looking for. He also let us know that it is at a point where he's comfortable with the mod and that we can for sure expect it to be the basis for the religion system in the coming update. Now that Dylan is getting more comfortable with the mod, I am hopeful that we'll actually get to see a little bit of him working on it and see some progress in the coming streams. Dylan is currently planning things for the mod to accommodate the missive system to see where there is overlap that they can use to make both of the additions more useful. A great example of this would be dark missives, something Lizzie from the dev team has talked a little bit about. If you are doing one of these shadier missions, how does your deity feel about this? Are they angry with you, or maybe they support these kinds of actions? Alternatively, they could be disinterested in it altogether. Dylan didn't say anything specific as to how this is intended to look at release, but I am excited to see what he and the team are able to put together. Something we did get a bit of information about is that the religion mod is incredibly detailed and interactive. The vision for the mod was to take into account a large number of factors about the character. Has a god even noticed you yet? If you're worshipping multiple gods at once, are they unhappy that you're doing so? How does the quest you're doing affect your deity's opinion of you? These are the types of things the mod takes into account, making your actions much more impactful. We also heard a little bit about some of the reasons the team chose to use the religion mod as the basis over something like Winter Sun. One of the features the team wanted was for players to be able to worship multiple gods at once, allowing additional diversity to the system. This will be a cool element to the game since you could potentially receive completely different buffs, helping improve different aspects of your playstyle, such as buffs to your shouting ability as well as your stamina regeneration. It could also be something that helps you make money easier while helping your abilities in combat as well. Unfortunately, Winter Sun doesn't have this functionality, making it not a great fit for the team's vision. Dylan also was looking for a mod that was very detailed, which is a realm that the religion mod appears to be unparalleled in. Lastly, Dylan talked about some of the more challenging aspects of the religion mod. While it's great that the mod pack is so detail-oriented, it does increase the workload overall for the team to match when they add something else to the game. They need to make sure they consider all the ways different updates they create will impact the system, which is definitely something they need to consider to make the most of the system. Another piece of the process to consider is, if they choose to add any additional deities to the game, there will be an incredible chunk of work to get them up to par with the deities already inside of the system. Something Dylan already talked about was just how much writing was involved with the project, which was large in part why the creator, Iron Dust, moved on from the project. This was the bulk of the information Dylan was prepared to share. Quickly moving to my own thoughts on the religion system, there are a couple things I would like to see added to Wildlander. I think adding special buffs for subsets of playstyles based around what different deities are known for would make certain playstyles more viable and interesting. I think this could be used to help certain playstyles such as a paladin who worships Stendar where it is definitely difficult to organically play this character since it doesn't feel very viable in the game. One of the options could be a small buff to damage based around your connection with Stendar in the form of holy damage that does extra to undead enemies such as vampires or draugr. Or maybe the player worships Malakath and there is a buff to your natural armor rating, making you more tanky in close quarters combat. Something else that would be cool branching off of my other idea was to have a sort of system where there are multiple minor blessings and skills you can receive from a god that you can opt into at different stages of progress with the gods. For instance, as you worship Sithis, 
you can choose to be more assassination focused, allowing sneak attacks to work against all enemies, including the late game ones. Or you can focus more on your deception abilities, making all illusion spells more likely to succeed, with a small chance to work against even enemies that are typically immune. This could help playstyles like a sneak archer to be more realistic in the later game. These are simply my ideas. What would you like to see in the coming update? Let me know in the comments below. That was all I had for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, leave a like and consider subscribing. Stay safe, Wadlanders.